Update. A mutual friend propositioned my newlywed wife for sex and affair. What's the best way to respond? Original post. So my wife is a bombshell 10 over 10. But more than that, she is an amazing woman. Compassionate, funny, caring, loyal, and awesome. And some of her friendly qualities are often mistaken as flirting or expressing interest. So with a heavy heart, she is now much more guarded when conversing with strangers. With old friends, she's her usual friendly self as they know her. But alas, now one incident has caused her to pull back from interacting freely with friends too. So we just got married last week and on Sunday night, we hosted a small dinner for a few of our close friends. Now, one of those close friends has had a crush on my wife for a while now. Nothing serious, but she knew and told me immediately, and then cut all unnecessary communication with him. That sucked for her because his wife is a good friend of my wife and because of his obvious crush, they couldn't meet as often. We thought he would get over it, but on Sunday nights, he cornered my wife for five minutes and delivered his love speech, about how he had to have her, and now he couldn't sleep knowing that she's married to me. How true love knows no boundaries or rules, love can't be constrained, and it should be free and so on and so forth. She immediately came and told me, but we didn't make a scene as there were other friends there too. Now she's royally pissed, it wants to expose him to all our friend group as he might have done the same thing to others too or he might in the future. I'm of the opinion that we should cut contact with him but don't do anything more than that. What's the best way forward? Now for the top advice before reading the update. Dude, you obviously tell his wife and then follow her lead with us. As if you just want to sweep this under the rug. At least be a good person and look out for the wife of this scumbag. Who would want to be married to that with some of your friends knowing what kind of a person he is? Come on. True love knows no boundaries or rules. Love can't be constrained and it should be free. Also make sure she's never alone with this creep. And she is aware she should be careful around him. It sounds like he is obsessed. It might even have deluded himself in thinking your wife loves him too. Right? This bloke is so clearly off his rocker to have been saying the things he was spouting. Yeah. Someone giving a speech like that, especially a married person, is giving me real bunny boiler alarm bells. His wife needs to know, and your friend circle needs to make sure that she's never left alone with him. P.S. The Opie's wife is great. Open and honest relationships are the best. I would 100% in your wife's shoes tell his wife who is her friend because that's obsessive, creepy, and disgusting. It's not cool to just let the other wife be married to this man. Yes. Hiding this from her is just gross. She deserves to know exactly who she's married to. A sleazy little creep man. Your wife is right. Tell his wife and everyone on your friend circle. Then kick him loose from your friend circle. He disrespected your wife. You. Your marriage and his wife been making such a statement. Don't buy the excuse that he was drunk or he was not in the senses. And now for the update. So I got a lot of good advice and some well-deserved criticisms about my behavior too. It was indeed not right for me to take it as lightly as I appeared to do. Believe me, I wanted to fight him, but it would not have solved any issue, only created more. But one thing the majority of the commenters got right was that I should have fully supported her desire to go nuclear on him, and I appreciate the honesty from you guys. So anyways, I went and told her that I am sorry I was not more supportive, and I am now 100% behind her even if it means I have to kick his butt. She laughed and said she has devised a plan of action. She was going to talk to his wife first and then inform all the women in our friend group as she thought it would be irresponsible for her to ignore his behavior in case he tries, slash already tried with anyone else. So she called his wife for lunch today and she told her. His wife was heartbroken and I stepped away to give her some freedom to vent. I went out and came back when my wife messaged me that she had gone. She told me that his wife confessed that it had happened once before too when they lived somewhere else. Apparently, she seemed almost resigned to the fact because she wasn't angry. Rather, she was sad. And when my wife told her that she will be telling other women of his behavior, she didn't protest. My wife has called everyone for lunch on Sunday and that's when she will tell them. She even feels bad about the wife, but feels it's kind of a moral responsibility to warn everyone. I'm in complete agreement here. That's the update. And I'm going to treat my wife to some homemade pizza tonight since she's so awesome. Yeah, I can make pizza. Lol. Thanks for the suggestion, guys. Backing your wife is the right move. And your wife handled it like a champ. Telling his wife in private and even letting her know she's going to tell the other women in the group. Good update. 
Sounds like your wife is a 10 on the outside and at least a 12 on the inside. So glad you took the advice to support her 100%. I hope you will continue to do so. Best of luck. Oh, I love, moderately, happy endings. And I love it when OPs actually listen to the advice given to them and it all works out. I only say moderately because I feel so bad for his wife. I hope she'll finally work up the courage to leave him. Next story. Update. Found out my best friend's girlfriend is hitting on my fiancé. Original post. My fiancé, male 28, and I, female 26, have a beach vacation coming up. It was supposed to be us, my sister and her husband. Circumstances changed and they won't be joining us, but their tickets are non-refundable. So we decided to invite my brother-in-law's brother Nate, male 27, who has also been my best friend since we were toddlers, and his girlfriend Kathy, female 27. We are all very close and hang out almost every week. We all have a group chat for the trip, and Kathy and I discuss girly stuffs privately. Last week, Kathy sent my fiancé some lingerie and bikini pictures, asking for a suggestion in his private chat. Fiancé assumed she sent it to him accidentally instead of me, and told her that. To which she said she wanted a man's opinion. And my fiancé said he didn't really have any opinion, and she should ask me or her boyfriend. He then showed me the messages when we both got home from work. We both thought it was weird and just moved past it. Side note, she never sent me anything asking for my opinion, even though a couple days later I asked for her opinion on some dresses. On Sunday, Nate and Kathy came to our house for dinner and to discuss our upcoming trip. Everything went great. I got a video call from my sister and brother-in-law and I was talking to them in the balcony and Nate came to say hi to his brother. According to my fiancé when Nate left the room, Kathy brought up the pictures and was asking him his opinion and even showed him pictures of her in lingerie and some of them were very revealing. Fiancé was cornered by her in the kitchen where he was clearing up some dishes. I called him from the balcony to participate in the video calls as my sister had some news. This was when he was able to get away from her. If it's relevant, she was a bit drunk. My fiancé told me this after they left, and I was, am, pissed at her. We both felt like all this happened too fast, and there weren't really any other signs. He also asked me to look through their chat to see if he was oblivious to her or something. There wasn't really much correspondence between them, except the occasional confirming of plans. I don't really know how to approach this with Nate and Kathy. I don't really want her on this trip if she's going to act like this. And also, fiancé is not at all comfortable with the idea. Nate is like a brother to me. I love him, and I don't want this to destroy our friendship. Also, given the situation, he deserves a lot better. So guys, what should I do? Now for the top advice before reading the update. You have to talk to Nate. Show him the text messages. There's no two-way about it. Should we talk to them both, or only to Nate first? It's a tricky situation. But as your relationship is with Nate, so I would say talk to just him. You and your fiancé, start off by saying you're sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Tell him you didn't know how to go about approaching him on this, but you feel he needs to know and the situation is making things uncomfortable for you and your fiancé, and then just hand him the phone. Just be honest about it. It's going to be a mess no matter what, but it'll be shadier if you don't tell them. We are definitely going to bring it up. I don't want her to turn things around and blame my fiancé. I know Nate is going to be hurt, but I want to minimize it as much as possible. Your fiancé should just straightforward tell her, Listen, this is all awkward. I'd expect her to gaslight as well. But you can back him up. Things will take care of themselves after the confrontation, if at all she's weird. We are supposed to leave for the trip on Saturday. We all have work till Friday. I don't know how to make time for confrontation. They work opposite shifts, so that's an issue too. I don't know who I should talk to first. Thanks for the advice. We are both taking afternoon off and are going to meet Nate tomorrow for lunch. He works night shift. Told him not to tell Kathy anything, as it's about a personal family stuff. Didn't tell him that fiancé would be there too. So hopefully he won't tell her anything. Do you still have the pictures as evidence? Do not go with her on a trip. She's trying to make the moves on your fiancé. Yes. We plan on showing him the pictures. They haven't been together for about four years, but we all know each other since we were kids, except my fiancé. And now for the update. Some of you wanted an update, so here it goes. My fiancé and I took the afternoon off work to meet with Nate, best friend, for lunch yesterday. Fiancé was running a bit late, so I reached the restaurant first. 
Nate and I were catching up, but he talked about how he misses hanging out just the two of us like when we were younger. I felt a bit guilty lying to him, so I told him fiancé was joining in some time as well. He started thanking me for inviting him on a trip. Apparently, due to their conflicting schedules, Nate and Kathy weren't spending much time together and their relationship was tense. He said that this trip would be the best thing for them, and he was really excited. Fiancé arrived at the tail end of this conversation and I felt so, so sad for Nate. I was almost ready to forgo the confrontation altogether. We basically apologized to him and I told him that Fiancé had something to say. Fiancé told him about the messages and what happened in the kitchen. Nate was in disbelief. Shock? But he was very quiet. He asked if he had the messages and Fiancé showed him. Then Nate said, now it makes sense. We were confused. It asked what he was talking about. Apparently when they left, Kathy was pretty drunk. And whole drive home, Kathy was mumbling things like nobody wants me, slash likes me, slash loves me, etc. In the last couple days after the incident, she was acting strange the little time they spent together. We told him we are there for him, obviously whatever he decides. But that we don't feel comfortable having Kathy on the trip, but he's still welcome. He said he would be talking to Kathy and letting us know, but they won't be joining us on the trip. Tonight before work, Nate stopped by our house and told us that he broke up with Kathy. He said he found some things but wasn't ready to talk about it yet. Since they used to live together, she couldn't move out anywhere immediately, so Nate will be staying at our place for a while. Also, both fiancé and I got an apology text from Kathy. So, I guess that's it. We are not really in the mood now for the trip, but maybe it would be a good way to put this all behind. It might be selfish, but I'm just grateful that Nate and I's friendship is still going strong and that it trusts us to help him through the stuff he's going through. Thank you to everyone for their advice. I think you all should still go on that trip. Y'all should let home wreck or wreck your plans too. Bring your friend. It would suck for him to be alone. Yes, that's what my fiancé and I were talking about just now. We don't want him to be alone. I guess it's time for another confrontation to make him agree to come with us, and maybe bring some other friend, so he won't feel like the third wheel because that was his argument. If he comes, make sure that you have activities planned, so that everyone isn't sitting around moping, and that you and your fiancé have some time alone as well. Your fiancé was basically harassed and needs a break as well. This trip was actually planned as a romantic getaway, but we are going to move some things around and include non-couple slash group activities. Fiancé and I will have time for us as well. Nate loves photography, so there will be something to do for him at all time. Good for Nate. It's a crappy situation. But it'll be better for it in the end. It speaks highly of your friendship that he trusts you so completely. He is an amazing person. I just hope everything works out for him and he's happy ASAP. OMG, if you do deliberately send underwear pictures to someone and they immediately respond with, I think this was supposed to be for my girlfriend, wrong number, then clearly they're not going to be into instigating an affair with you. So why would you push it? Kathy not only had severe issues with her insecurity, she also really wasn't smart about being unfaithful. Now for the last story. My boyfriend, 29 male, kissed my sister, 24 female, while I, 28 female, was asleep in another room with our baby. I, 28 female, have been with my partner, 29 male, for four years now. We have a daughter together, one female, and we also have partial care for a son from a previous relationship, six male. Recently, he and I moved in with my family, my mother and sister, 24 female, to save for a house deposit. We have been there for about six months now. On Friday night, I had gone to bed with my daughter while my sister and my partner stayed up drinking and talking. He came in to check on us periodically throughout the evening. I thought everything was normal, until yesterday morning. My sister, who had recently come out of an awful relationship, started telling me that she thought my partner sometimes behaved horribly towards me. It's worth noting she has hinted at this in the past, but she's never told me to get rid of him before now. Thinking this was strange, I called my partner and asked him if he could think of a reason she would be so angry with him. He danced around it for a bit, and then he told me that he and my sister had done cocaine together, which is a betrayal in itself because he knows my views on this, particularly around our daughter. And then they shared a kiss. He said that it didn't go further than that. When I spoke to my sister, she said that he tried to force himself on her. I don't think he would have done that, but I can't believe he tried it on with her. My sister is playing the victim hardcore, and she's telling me to leave him, and now my mother doesn't want him in her house. I'm staying with a friend right now, but my boyfriend, my sister, and mother are all blowing up my phone. 
He is incredibly apologetic. He cried and gave me flowers. I don't know what to believe. Both of their stories keep changing. Despite everything, I do love him and I'm strongly considering taking him back. Guys, what should I do? If their stories keep on changing, it could be more than a kiss. Not sure if it matters if, slash when, slash how they change. There's no way of getting around the fact, assuming these things are true, that things happened and were hidden from OP. Would it matter who brought this substance? No, he did them. Violation of trust. Would it matter who initiated a kiss? Not really, it takes two. Violation of trust. Would it matter whether you were asleep, outside, running errands, etc.? No, that you were with your child makes it worse but the facts don't change. Would it matter if they went further than a kiss? Not really, unless your relationship boundaries are such that a kiss would be permissible. Violation of trust. OP, I think you should focus on the fact that your trust was and now, a story's change continues, to be violated. Not in the surrounding details that keep changing, or in context that frankly isn't at the center of this. OP, the reality of what you presented is that they did drugs. They kissed, at a minimum. That doesn't seem likely to change. If you wish to forgive one or both, if you wish to take one or both back into your life, that's up to you. Aside from the situation now, why did your sister think he's acting horribly towards you? For me, the worst thing in this situation is not to kiss, but to coke. It's your mother's home, and you were there with your toddler. Why the heck does he feel he needs to do coke there with your sister? And he did that knowing you wouldn't like it. For me, that's a big red flag. And if I were you, I would consider leaving him for that. Or giving him the opportunity to go to couples therapy together so he can show he want to work on him and his relationship. I think she thinks he is horrible because he can sometimes be bossy and condescending. I call him out on it in private, and we discuss it and move on. I have already mentioned couples therapy to him. He seemed receptive, 